Today I'm going to be giving you 17 things to do in Tokyo and there's definitely going to be some things in this video that you haven't heard of before. Tokyo is the most populated city in the world with over 37 million people and it has a huge expanse with so much to do and see and you're going to need at least four days in the city. At least four days. Tokyo is very well connected with two big international airports, Haneda and Narita, with Narita being further out the city but well connected with the Narita Airport Express train. Tokyo is the best connected city that I've ever been to with public transport literally reaching every street of the city, not quite every street. But just keep in mind there is so many metro lines, so many different train lines that it can get a bit confusing and overwhelming, just use Google Maps. Little tip there. Now enough of the boring stuff, in no particular order, let's start with number one is the karaoke Ferris wheel. You get 10 to 15 minutes on the ride which is called the Big O where you can sing your heart out to loads of different songs with your friends looking around Tokyo. Honestly, it's such a great experience and it costs 850 yen if you would like to do this. It is based in the Tokyo Dome, which is like an amusement park right in the middle of the city. Now, number two is Mount Fuji. You cannot go to Tokyo or Japan in general without visiting Mount Fuji. And I know it's not actually in the city of Tokyo, obviously. The most popular way to do this is via a day trip and you can do these from Tokyo. And I'll leave a link to some in the description below. When you go on the day trip, you will visit the famous spots around Fuji, which you've seen on Instagram with the beautiful temples. Now, if you wanna do something different, me and my friends actually rented a car in the Fuji area and we explored around. Honestly, this is the less touristy way to do it. So if you wanna avoid the crowds and not go on these day trips, then you can actually take a few days and stay the night around Fuji area. Now, number three is Memory Lane, also known as Omodo Yukocho. Probably pronounced that completely wrong. If you walk down here, you go down these small narrow streets with loads of little restaurants and bars either side. The smells, the atmosphere is incredible and it gets super busy at night. But honestly, if you can wait in line and wait for the experience, it looks amazing. Unfortunately, we didn't eat there because it was just so busy. Memory Lane is based in Shinjuku, but another spot which is really good for food and drink in Shinjuku is Golden Guy. And there's 220 little bars there which you can go and eat and drink at and get that same kind of experience. Now moving on to number four, and this is not something to do in Tokyo, but something I highly recommend, and that is getting NordVPN. And I'll show you an incredible little hack of why you need it. As you probably already know, a VPN protects your data and allows you to change the country it looks like you're in. This works with lots of stuff, but let's see how it can work with YouTube Premium. As you can see, when I'm not connected to a VPN, it shows that YouTube Premium costs £11.99, as right now I'm in the UK. However, if you change your location to Argentina with NordVPN, then it's only gonna cost you £1.35. Now that is just a ridiculous deal. And before you say it, NordVPN only costs a few pounds a month. So even with both subscriptions, you're still saving a lot of money. And that's not even mentioning the countless other benefits. NordVPN have a special sale on right now, so click the top link in the description to get yourself NordVPN. Now, number five is probably the most iconic building in all of Japan, and that is the Tokyo Tower. The streets around the Tokyo Tower are beautiful, especially in cherry blossom season. Take those famous Instagram shots. One thing I would not recommend is going up the Tokyo Tower. And do you know why? Because if you go up the Tokyo Tower, you're not gonna see the Tokyo Tower. And that leads on to the next one, number six, of where you should view the Tokyo Tower from. Now, number six is Roppongi Hills, which is probably the best viewpoint in the city or maybe the second best. But here you get incredible views of the Tokyo Tower, unlike if you were up the Tokyo Tower. To go up Roppongi Hills, you need to book in advance. We used Klook and I'll leave a link to it in the description. It costs $13, which is a pretty good deal. You go up to this glass viewing gallery and get expansive views over the city. However, something which a lot of people miss out is if you spend an extra 500 yen, you can go up to the helicopter pad on the top roof deck. It is brilliant and obviously you are outside. Now number seven is if you're coming to Japan, you cannot miss out on eating sushi. And that's why number seven is go to a sushi train restaurant. We went to this sushi train restaurant in Shibuya and honestly, it was so much fun and actually very, very affordable. You order your sushi from this iPad and it gets taken to you on this conveyor belt and you just pick it up and eat as much sushi as you can. 
Per plate, it only costs 130 yen, so it's really affordable and such a fun experience to do in Japan. Now, number eight is a free viewpoint, and it is not the best view in the city. However, it is free, and so if you're in the area because it is based in Shinjuku, then why not go up it? The building is called the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building, and it's 202 meters, and you can actually see Mount Fuji in the distance if it's a clear day. Now, number nine is one of Amelia's and myself's favorite things we did in all of Japan, and that is the Team Lab Planets. This is an immersive art experience where you're in this museum for two hours and you take your socks and shoes off and you go up to water knee deep. I know this is sounding real weird, but you just have to do it because it's such a cool kind of sensory experience and you're not gonna know what I'm on about unless you do it. Team Lab Planets books up well in advance because it is super popular. We booked on Kluk and I'll leave a link to it in the description. Just make sure you do it when you're in Tokyo. Now number 10 is something super fun and that is sumo wrestling. You can actually go watch sumo wrestlers have a little fight and push each other outside the ring. Just look in advance because they're not on all the time. And if they're not on, you can actually do like a sumo wrestling match yourself and like wrestle people. I'll leave that in the description if you wanna do that. Looks good fun. Now number 11 is Shibuya Crossing and this is known as the busiest pedestrian intersection in the world. Make sure you visit at night because it is super busy, super colorful, and it feels kind of like the Times Square of Tokyo. Shibuya is also a great place to go out at night because there's loads of different bars, clubs, arcades, all that kind of stuff. So go to Shibuya at night and you're gonna have a good evening. Now, before we move on, if you haven't already, please go down and hit that subscribe button. If this has given you any value, it will help me out and all you need to do is hit subscribe. Now, number 12 is something super fun that you're probably gonna wanna do this in about 30 seconds time. So in Tokyo, you can actually drive Mario Karts around the streets of Tokyo. And yes, this is a real thing, you can do it. And I'll leave a link in the description. Basically, you drive around the neon streets of Tokyo in this little cart like you're in a real live Mario Kart game. Unfortunately, it is quite expensive and you do need an international driving license if you are gonna do this, which is why I couldn't do it. But just keep that in mind and make sure you get your IDP, international driving license. Now, number 13 is something you'll realize a lot when you get to Japan, and that is that vending machines are absolutely everywhere. I'm talking every street or even more than every street. Sometimes you just get an army of vending machines in front of you with selling all kinds of things. If you look quite hard, you can actually find some very interesting vending machines selling ice creams, goyozas, loads of different stuff. A couple of places in Tokyo actually have a ramen vending machine restaurant. We did this and basically you choose the ramen you want on the vending machine, you get this ticket and you give it to the chef and they cook up that exact ramen for you. Now number 14 is not gonna be for everyone one because this has to be a specific time of the year which we were lucky enough to go at and that is the cherry blossom season if you are going in cherry blossom season it is beautiful if you are there at peak times Tokyo is an incredible place to be. You might think it's just a built up city, but it's actually got loads of cherry blossom and lovely parks to go see it. If you go to one of the parks right in the middle of the city, you can actually get a little boat and go around the stream and be amongst the cherry blossom. Now, one thing to mention, if you are going to Japan in cherry blossom season, it is the most touristy time of the year in Japan. And so it is gonna be extremely busy. Make sure you book in advance restaurants, hotels, transport, viewpoints, activities, because things will book up in advance, especially at that time of the year. Cherry blossom season changes each time every year. So just look at dates in January because they kind of get released and then hopefully you can get the right dates. Now a little plug from me, bear with me. If you wanna save some money on hotels, then you can actually use my very own hotel booking website. And the best thing is, these are wholesale rates. So you can actually get some incredible saving deals which are way better than Agoda, booking.com, Expedia. So if you wanna save some money and also help support me, then use this booking website. Some other people have booked already and they've saved money. If you wanna have a look, I'll leave the hotel booking website below. Now number 15 is go to Senjoji Temple. This is an ancient Buddhist temple in Asakusa 
in Tokyo. I've definitely got that name wrong. It's Tokyo's oldest temple and one of the most significant and it opened way back in 645 AD. Walking around the streets near Senjoji Temple is honestly feels like you've been thrown back in time so different to the other modern parts of Tokyo. Now number 16 is Akinbara and this is the bright light shopping district of Tokyo which is famous for its electronic retailers specializing in manga, anime and video games. Japanese arcades are honestly so much fun and we went to quite a few in Tokyo but we also went to a very special one in Osaka and that's called Round One Stadium and you basically get for $18 three hours of unlimited arcade games and basically 50 different sports including archery, tenpin bowling, like baseball, so much stuff you just have to go. I know it's not Tokyo but it's in Osaka. If you go in Osaka just go. It's great value and so much fun. Now number 17, we have come to the last thing you should do in Tokyo and that is going to be the best viewpoint in Tokyo, Shibuya Sky. This is super modern and feels like kind of futuristic viewpoint. You basically go up this elevator with like lights and you come up to this glass viewpoint and it is incredible. You can also take elevators up the side looking down at the very famous Shibuya Crossing. Honestly, it's a great viewpoint which you can see the whole of the city and even Mount Fuji on a clear day. Now, as it's the best viewpoint in Tokyo, it's going to book up in advance. So what you need to do is click the link in the description and it will take you to Kluk where you can book in advance. Guys, I hope you enjoyed those 17 things to do. Honestly, you're going to have an incredible time in Japan and Comment down below what you do, what you're doing, and if you've got any other cool recommendations of what you should do in Tokyo. And if you haven't already, I've got an incredible video which is gonna help you prepare for your trip in Japan. So hit subscribe so you do not miss that video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.